So we're going to pick up where we left off from yesterday um, and talk about the next group, um, the next uh, phylum of creatures, animal invertebrates. These are called the Echinodermata, and the name literally means spiny skin. And um, indeed, all these creatures in this group have skin that has spines. Um, and the spines originate from the skin layer of the tissue. They have body parts with at least five sections. So um, um, you can think of a sea star um, with five legs as being the prime example of that. Sea stars are in this group, as are sea urchins, as are pictured here. Um, and um, they have suction cup feet that they use to walk on. And they use tubes to catch food. And if you looked um, in between the spines of a sea urchin, you would see tiny um, tube-like feet all over the outside of the, the round body of this uh, echinoderm. And um, if you've ever picked up a sea star, especially one of the big ones called Pisaster, they're orange and purple, and um, orange, purple, and um, I can't remember the third color, but maybe, green maybe. Um, they have really spiny, tough um, outer skin. Um, and of course, you know that sea urchins have definite spines. Um, some are sharper than others. Um, the ones in Florida, I know for a fact, are super sharp. They can go right through your skin. The ones that we have here, the purple sea urchins, um, Strongylocentrotus purpuratus is their scientific name. And these guys have spines on them, not too sharp, but if you were a fish or something wanting to eat it, um, it those spines would definitely pose um, a problem to, uh, to you if you wanted to eat it. And sea urchins are super delicious, um, by the way, too. Sonia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, black sea urchins, um, they're not poisonous. I don't think any of the sea urchins are poisonous, but um, the spines are super sharp, and you don't want to touch them because when you're in the cold water, you feel like you're not touching anything, but you're, there's actually a spine, a sharp spine, going through your, your finger there. Okay? All right. Um, the next group that we're going to learn about is called the mollusca. <coughs> the mollusca. And these are invertebrates with soft bodies. Many of them have a hard outer coating, a shell. Um, and some of them, and these are the snails and the clams, um, some of them have an in, an external or or an internal skeleton um, that uh, that's called a pen that you're going to see in dissecting lab with the squids um, and the internal skeleton of squids. The pen is kind of a, a glassy, see-through um, type of uh, material, but it provides structural support and spring back. Um, when they move their muscles and, and contract. Um, octopi have a uh, what's called a hydrostatic skeleton. And this is a skeleton made of water pressure um, fed through tubes inside of its body. Um, they're very muscular. They have um, suction cups on their eight tentacles. Those suction cups themselves, depending on the species, can have giant um, claws. Um, a round circle of teeth, if you will, that will latch onto and um, dig into the prey item that it wants to eat. And octopods and squids, they both have um, a hard beak that they use to tear flesh when they um, find a prey item that they want to eat. Snails have um, a, a drilling rig that, um, if it's a carnivorous snail, um, they have a drilling rig that they'll jump on top of a clam and send down the drilling rig. It's called a radula, and it's a hard um, drill bit 
that they use to drill through the shell of the clam. And they drill through the clam and then they suck the guts of the clam out the hole. And they eat, they eat the clam that way. And if you ever find a clam on the beach with, um, with a perfectly round countersunk hole, a hole that has beveled edges on it, um, you know that you have a murder mystery on your hands and um, some uh, snail, some marine snail, um, actually jumped on top of that clam and sucked its guts out. Now, there are snails um, that live on land. They don't live in the ocean. And there's also snails and clams that live in freshwater lakes and ponds. Um, and the two-shelled mollusks, the bivalves, the clams, um, they have a big foot to pull themselves along and usually an in-current and an ex-current siphon that they'll use to suck in water and um, push out waste. And I'm just going to go through the basics of the arthropods and then we'll get into the details tomorrow. I would like you to draw this picture. Um, I'd like you to write the word arthropoda, the arthropods, and I'd like you to write the words for, there are four groups, and then draw that diagram. Um, arthropoda means um, jointed leg in Latin. And indeed, these creatures um, have legs that have um, jointed appendages, jointed um, segments, I should say. And the segments can move and they articulate, they, could, they join together and they um, are movable. And this makes the arthropods highly adaptable and highly successful. They can grab onto things, um, um, landing pads and branches and prey items. They can manipulate their food, um, all with these jointed appendages, these jointed legs. And there's four main groups in um, um, the crustaceans, which are crabs and lobsters, the arachnids, which of course are the spiders, the insects, which are the most diverse group of creatures on Earth, just about. Um, we'll get into the insects and how many different types and all the different forms. Um, these are t usually when you see, you know, a, a bug or when you think about a bug, you're thinking about really an insect. And then, of course, a smaller group is the, the, the cool centipedes and millipedes. Um, when I was a kid, these were like, these were some of my favorite things, um, but I was afraid to touch them because, you know, I heard they're poisonous. And indeed, some of them are, but usually not to humans. Um, and they're super fun to watch their legs move, right? Um, I need to get a close-up camera video of their legs moving. Just beautiful, especially with the millipedes, the ones that have many, many legs. Centipedes, too. Um, some of the centipedes can grow ginormous. Um, in, I believe it's Africa, there's ones that are huge. They're like a foot long and, you know, you could at the uh, San Francisco Academy of Sciences um, and you can go there and the San Francisco Zoo as well and see some of these gigantic centipedes and hold them actually. They're not poisonous and um, it's really a thrill to hold these beautiful creatures. Okay, um, let's take some questions. Let me shut this down. And um, I know that some of you have some questions here. 